Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be bringing you guys our third installment of our winter forecast series so far this year. We're going to go over the precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and then the updated overall forecast in just a moment. Now before I get into the video, I would ask that you do subscribe, that you like the video, and leave a comment down below because that helps out so much. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think you will see above average snow or below average snow this upcoming winter? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, if you like the video and leave a comment down below with your location, I will give you guys an updated forecast for your specific location. So even if you've commented and liked before on the other winter forecast, I'll give you an updated version today. So be sure to do that no matter what, because I'll be giving you guys a little bit more of a specific breakdown for your region. Again, like the video, comment your location. I'll be sure to do that for you guys as many as possible. Obviously we get thousands of comments usually when I do that. So I'm going to try my hardest for you guys. Now let's get straight into things. First things first, we're taking a look at this precipitation forecast here. And we're starting things out in the Southwest where we, this hasn't really changed a lot, but we have below normal precipitation expected for California, uh, Nevada there, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, all of these regions expect slightly below normal precipitation in this tan region. Now we have a darker brown region here. And as you can see for California and especially Arizona there, uh, that is where we expect even more below normal precipitation. We're a little bit more confident in it in that darker brown region down there for the southwestern corner of the United States. Now, the interesting thing here is that usually this is dictated by what is called our El Nino. And you know what that is probably because you've probably heard about it. You either get an El Nino, a neutral Enso, or a La Nina. In an El Nino, you guys see a lot of precipitation down there, actually. You see above normal in, in most cases, but in La Nina's, you see the opposite. You see below normal precipitation. So last winter, we were in a La Nina, and this winter, we're expected to also be in a La Nina. This is typically, I, I guess in general, the explanation for why you can expect below normal precipitation for the most part. We're actually quite confident in that as well. Now, up for the Northwest... Usually it's the opposite. In a La Nina, you see above normal precipitation. And in an El Nino, you see below normal precipitation. So since we're in a La Nina, I expect above normal precipitation for you guys up there in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming as well. Uh, the interesting thing here is that we actually have a moderate shade of this as well, actually, as you can see for Washington and Oregon, where those storms will be coming right on shore. Uh, that's going to lead to even further above normal precipitation for you guys. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our next above normal precipitation region where we have two shades of that as well. Then we're going to get right into the temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and overall forecast a little bit later on. Now, here is our other above normal precipitation region. And this one here is for the eastern third of the country. As you can see, uh, Texas up through Arkansas and some of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley regions. And you take that eastward towards the east coast. We all expect in general to see some slightly above normal precipitation. There has been some model guidance that has suggested that we could still see some nor'easters here, even though we're in a La Nina, which usually makes it a little bit more rare, but we're still seeing the chance for that. So that's why we have in general the above normal precipitation uh, everywhere. Now here is our moderate shade of above normal precipitation, and this is where we're a little bit more confident. So from Texas, coastal Texas that is, all the way through the Gulf states and then up the east coast, we're a little bit more confident in those above normal precipitation anomalies there. Now in last installment, in the last installment of this winter forecast, we had the third shade there. I'm just sticking with the second shade in this installment because I really feel like it's not as confident as some of our other factors uh, with the La Nina in place. A lot of different things could happen with that East Coast precipitation. So we're backing down a little bit because we were getting a little bullish with the third shade there, I think. Uh, a little overkill, uh, especially as we move a little bit closer. We're getting some diff differing opinions in general uh, on that kind of nor'easter track potential there. Uh, which is usually very typical, again, in El Nino, not necessarily in a La Nina, so it is kind of, the odds are a little bit against it for sure. Now let's just move right into that temperature forecast here. We're starting out with the above normal temperatures here, and that's going to be for the southwestern United States. This is another one that's very common uh, in a La Nina. Uh, very, very common to see kind of the southwestern United States in, in those above normal temperatures, and typically even the entire southern United States, it is pretty typical to see them in the above normal temperature anomalies. But in this case, it appears likely that mostly uh, the southwestern United States will be the heart of that warmth 
uh, to, due to uh, a couple of different factors. Uh, now here is our moderate shade of those above normal temperature anomalies here. And this is going to be mostly for California, uh, Nevada there, Utah, Arizona, and a little bit of New Mexico as well. Again, this is just where we're a little bit more confident in these above normal temperature anomalies. And I think this is really going to be our main ridge. It's going to allow for those storms to move right over top of this ridge up into the northwest, which again is where we expect the above normal uh, precipitation. And then it's going to really be able to just dive down into the kind of central regions and the eastern regions of the United States. So let's go ahead and take a look at that below normal temperature region here real quickly. And as you can see, that does go above that ridge, but also to the east of it, where most of the eastern United States is expecting below normal temperatures there. And a little bit of the northwest as well. Uh, that storminess is going to provide more cloudiness, which is going to allow for less sun, which therefore uh, leads to a little bit less warmth. And that is typically why we see the stormiest regions, see the most below normal temperatures in a, in a long-term forecast. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and take a look at our moderate shade of this below normal temperature region and even the far below normal temperature region. And then we're going to break out the snowfall forecast and even the overall forecast in just a moment. Now, here we are taking a look at that moderately below normal temperature region here. And as you can see, from Montana down through the central United States, the Ohio Valley, the Gulf States, the East Coast, all of it, we're expecting that cold air to dive down from Canada. Uh, a lot of teleconnections are in a good place right now, including, uh, but especially really the, the NAO right now, the water seemed very favorable for a negative NAO winter, which is kind of key sign number one, uh, that we could have a colder winter in the Eastern United States. Typically also La Nina's are a little bit better than El Nino's for colder winters in the East as well. Uh, a neutral ENSO is actually the best, so if it was a little bit less of a La Nina or a weaker La Nina, that's going to kind of be the sweet spot for the best potential for a cold and snowy winter in the eastern half of the country. At this point, the good news for snow and cold lovers is that it does appear like it will be on the weaker side of things with that La Nina, which again, this is the second La Nina, by the way, and usually the second one is the weaker of the two uh, throughout history, which is a little bit of like an interesting uh, fact there. Now here's the third shade of those below normal temperatures, and this is just really where the heart of it is going to be, and I think due to that negative NAO potential, and then also the weaker La Nina, those two things combined, lead me to feel like it could be a colder winter, but really what it's going to rely on is the AO. What's the Arctic Oscillation going to be? Because if it's constantly in its positive phase, you can kiss cold goodbye until we see it hit its negative phase, and sometimes it, doesn't, it just doesn't want to do it very frequently. But if it does do it frequently, if we do see a uh, stronger... If we see a stronger polar vortex uh, up there in the Arctic regions and then it kind of breaks down kind of in the December, January, or February time frame, uh, you can expect a good chance at a below normal temperature winter. Although I know that's very complicated. So uh, you're going to have to watch our winter thought series for a, more of a breakdown on like the technical side of everything, kind of breaking down what everything means, what it is. Uh, and I plan on making more installments of that soon. So be sure to subscribe for those, by the way. Here's that snowfall forecast. I just want to get right into it. Uh, this is kind of using a combination of our temperature and precipitation forecast to come up with some sort of conclusion for what the snowfall chance forecast is going to look like. Here's the below normal snowfall chance. And this is obviously in the southwestern United States because they have above normal temperatures, below normal precipitation expected. Uh, and those two things lead to below normal snowfall chance. Now for the northwestern United States, you have above normal precipitation and below normal temperatures. That'll lead to above average snowfall chances. And then the eastern United States, obviously, with the below normal temperatures and that above average precipitation, again, that leads towards the above average snowfall. And we even have a second shade of that indicating that this is the coldest and most precipitation in that region there in the eastern United States, indicating that that gives us the best chance at above average snowfall, um, above average snowfall chance there. Here is the overall forecast finally. This is always my favorite one because I think it just gives a really nice description for each region there. Let's start out with the southwest where not a lot has changed. More dry and more warm there uh, for those two regions down there. That has kind of been the case throughout all of my winter forecasts because with the La Nina in place, it just makes it kind of obvious that that is typically what's going to happen. There's a very good chance of that. Stormy up there for the northwest is a little bit less likely than the southwest being dry, but it's also another very, very strong factor going into this winter and we feel very confident in that one right there typical snow there for the rockies it could be a bit above normal or below normal but 
they're going to see a ton of snow regardless. It doesn't really matter. Uh, snowy there for areas a little bit east of the Rockies. I think they're going to have some nice cold push into there and a little bit of some above normal precipitation at times. It'll lead towards some snowy times. Usually La Nina has bring this area a lot of snowfall, actually. Then... For the north central United States, with the current setup uh, with the NAO, with the with the ENSO, and potentially the AO, uh, it seems possible that the polar vortex could make an appearance. So we're going to be watching for that possibility uh, throughout the winter months, and obviously the fall months will tell us a lot more as well. We see warm and dry down there for areas in Texas and New Mexico. Uh, that is western Texas and eastern New Mexico, uh, but very close to normal actually. Down there, four regions uh, in Missouri, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. Uh, we expect Arctic blasts to be possible. Kind of like the polar vortex, just a little bit less potent usually further south. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of changing up the wordage there a little bit. We see above average lake effect uh, possible there for those red regions. And that's mostly due to some warmer lakes. They've had a lot of warm temperatures this summer there over the lakes regions. And if that continues into September and October... Look out, because that's usually a, a very big sign that we're going to have a huge, huge lake effect snow season. So that is a possibility at this point uh, due to that very warm summer we've had so far. Uh, and likely since summer's ending in seven days, according to meteorological summer, which is the more better one, in my opinion, um, it, we're pretty much going to see above normal lakes uh, heading into the fall time at least. It really depends on how the early fall goes, though. Uh, we see worst of winter down there for that blue region. I expect kind of more of that inland track area to have the worst of winter, but it could be pushed a little bit more east. I just feel like that inland region could uh, definitely see that. Huge nor'easter is possible as well. Uh, again, that likelihood has gone down a tiny bit, but it still is a big possibility this upcoming winter. So we're going to watch out in these white regions for some potential snowfall due to those big, big nor'easters. And some of our biggest nor'easter blizzards have happened during La Nina's, even though they're less likely during La Nina's. I feel like the bigger ones have happened in, in La Nina's as opposed to El Nino's, which is really weird. Uh, winter battle zone down there in the pink, you could see ice, rain, snow, all of it. It's going to be a sloppy mess, uh, very typical for this region. Nothing you're not used to, but there could be a little bit more of it this upcoming winter. And then finally, last but not least, very stormy down there in that green kind of turquoise region. Uh, for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, uh, we're likely no wintry precipitation will be occurring, but it is possible, but likely not. Uh, so it'll be mostly just rainfall for that region. For today's confidence tab, we are at a three out of six because of the fact that this is still a pretty long range forecast. Winter won't be starting for another three months, so we're still a bit far away, but we're drawing much closer. For today's comment of the day, in yesterday's video, I uploaded our first frost. When do we expect your first frost forecast, by the way? So you can check that out today. That's yesterday's upload, like I said before. But I asked you guys, do you expect fall to occur a little bit earlier than normal or later? And James Marr said, I believe slightly earlier than normal for a brief time, then back to above average temperatures for a while. Um, so it, it kind of goes back and forth like that. So I think that was a good comment of the day there. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Jabba Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagle, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Nino Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Qualisi, Dwight Palin, and Steven Grunenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.